Hello and thank you very much for having me. This is my first time presenting remotely, so I do hope that uh, you enjoy it and I will jump right into my presentation. Researching the past, the women's film festivals of the 1970s. When I started my research project on contemporary women's film festivals, I quickly realised I wanted to learn more about their roots, where they came from and how they have changed in the 50 odd years that they have been around. Unfortunately, the majority of women's film festivals in the 1970s were never properly archived. Memories and ephemera from these groundbreaking events are forgotten in boxes, on attics and in basements. They live on as untold stories in the minds of people who attended and organised them. Fast forward to the phase climate of austerity, in which film festivals are challenged to deliver more and more value for less and less money. The lack of time, staff, funding, training and space still inhibits film festivals to create seamless archives to preserve their activities for the future. In this paper, I will attempt to connect my archival research of early women's film festivals with my practice as a festival producer and co-founder of Filmspectives, a feminist film festival in Glasgow. I will provide an overview of the methodological challenges I faced in researching these events and explore how they have influenced the archiving process of our own festival. The first women's film festivals were established in North America and Europe in the early 1970s. Among these pioneering events were festivals in New York, Chicago, Philadelphia and Washington, Toronto, Berlin, Paris and Edinburgh. B. Ruby Rich suggests that the phenomenon of women's film festivals was a logical consequence of the revolutionary ideologies of the 1960s. She writes that, quote, for a younger generation just emerging from a 60s countercultural framework, women's film festivals were experimental laboratories, producing a new feminist cinematic consciousness while simultaneously putting into practice the political commitment behind the activity. In the 1970s, these festivals were often the only spaces where many women could showcase their work and where they could research and write women's film history. Ironically, the events themselves are only sporadically documented and there is little in-depth research on their origins, their development or their legacies. If you read Kay Armitage's account in the first volume of the Film Festival Yearbook, you might remember that partly this can be attributed to the lack of materials documenting the festivals. Many women's film festivals have completely disappeared from the archives. This, of course, posed a huge challenge to my research. One of my primary research goals was to reconstruct the historical development of women's film festivals. And so I started piecing together any information I could find from different sources and about different festivals. The result is a detailed account of everything I could find about the earliest women's film festivals in North America and Europe. Being in Scotland, I was particularly intrigued by the women's film event held at the 1972 Edinburgh International Film Festival. I dove into an uncatalogued archive held at the National Library of Scotland, conducted interviews with the festival organisers and began to wrap my head around the patchy and sometimes conflicting information that I found. The women's film event in Edinburgh stood out from other women's film festivals at the time because it was part of a well-established, if underfunded, film festival. From 1968, Edinburgh established revolutionary and radical programming strategies, which provided the perfect foundation for a successful programme of women's films. As such, I expected it to be easy to find out more about the event, but of course it did not turn out that way. In the many publications about Edinburgh, the women's film event is either not mentioned at all or brushed over with a few sentences. Even though I had been in touch with the National Library of Scotland, its public facing staff members were not aware of the uncatalogued EIFF archive held at the library. It was by complete accident that I heard about it and connected with the curator behind the scenes who could give me access to a rough inventory of 200 boxes in the collection. In the end, I found many archival sources about the women's film event, but it took a long time to get there, which in itself is tricky to reconcile with a PhD timeline. Another challenge I faced had to do with oral history and memory. It was on the one hand very difficult to track down anyone who had attended the women's film event, which lies almost 50 years in the past now, 
And on the other hand, memory can be a really unreliable source and the people I managed to get a hold of were not always sure they remembered correctly or they just couldn't remember. With this in mind, I had to cross-reference my interviews with the festival organisers with the festival ephemera that I found in the archive. And sometimes that process generated more questions than it could answer. The materials held at the National Library of Scotland include programme schedules and flyers, press releases, press clippings, production notes and film brochures, receipts for film licences, handwritten notes and many letters to and from Linda Miles, who was one of the co-organisers of the event. Many of the programme schedules and press releases are undated, which made it really difficult to put them in a chronological order. But the receipts and letters gave me a good idea of which films were considered for the programme and which might have screened without ever making it into the regular programme. My engagement with these materials forced me to unlearn certain things I thought I knew about the women's film event, about Edinburgh and about film festivals in general. I first encountered this concept of radical unlearning through the research on feminist pedagogy by Maud Perrier and Deborah Withers. They argued that by unlearning what we thought we knew about a certain historical event, we open up new possibilities of learning. This understanding of feminist archival research led me to Kate Eichhorn and her concept of the archival turn in feminism. She argues that the archival turn describes the shift from an understanding of the archive as a repository for documents to acknowledging every engagement with the archive as an act of producing new knowledge. However, people who engage with the archive do not only gain new knowledge, they also gain energy to envision a different and more autonomous present and future. As such, I drew strength and inspiration from my engagement with the women's film event, and I found a way to implement what I had learned from my own research into my feminist activism in the present. In 2018, I co-founded Filmspectives, a feminist film festival in Glasgow, with the feminist programmer and writer Lauren Clark. Our first event was an attempt at restaging the women's film event from 72. Unfortunately, many of the films were impossible to track down, and many of the leads we found turned out to be dead ends. It seemed like history was repeating itself as we went through the same frustrating process that the co-organisers of the women's film event must have gone through in 72, when they tried to find copies of films for their programme. The films were as hard to track down now as they were in the 1970s. In the end, we screened two films that were part of the original programme, Jane Arden's The Other Side of the Underneath and Sue Crockford's A Woman's Place. But we are continuing our search and hope to screen more in the future. We partnered with Glasgow Women's Library, an iconic local feminist institution and the Radical Film Network Scotland, a loose network of individuals and organisations to challenge the way in which we engage with film and cinema. This allowed us to embed the event in a radical and feminist context of Glasgow's film cultures today. And in a way, we took a linear timeline from 72 to today, folded the two ends together and create, tried to create a circle. We approximated our audiences now with the audiences of the events back then. The restaging opened up an interesting exchange between the present and the past. It invited the audience to engage with materials from a historic event and allowed them to contextualise these anew with a contemporary feminist framework in mind. But in line with Eichhorn's theory, they also gained new energy and inspiration for their own feminist activism in present times. One participant pointed out that she took away the immense importance to document feminist stories, events and movements. In a similar way, my research of the women's event inspired the way Lauren and I document and archive from Spectives. From the beginning, we emphasised the importance of documenting our festival in order to provide as much information as possible for future reference. Considering my own research experience with the archival materials, I felt that it was crucial to provide a different experience for potential future researchers. Filmspectives is the only feminist film festival in Scotland at the moment. Um, conceived at a time when issues of gender equality, sexualised violence against women and the oppression of marginalised groups keeps feminisms at the forefront of public discourses. If I was interested in an event that happened in Edinburgh almost 50 years ago, who knows who would be interested in our festival in the future? 
as an archivist and researcher, I began to envision what the ideal festival archive would look like. But as a practitioner, I knew that compromises would have to be made. The ideal archive follows the principles of completeness, transparency and accountability. But of course, in reality, we faced similar restraints as the festivals did in the 1970s. Resources are limited, there is no dedicated space for archive materials and paid staff hours are way too precious to spend on archiving activities. As a young organisation, we have to prioritise other tasks such as organising film screenings, writing funding applications and relationship building. Other obstacles, such as the lifespan of technologies, have only increased in intensity in the digital age. However, we keep and date handwritten notes and other materials for meetings with the goal that they can be catalogued, transcribed, digitised and archived at a later point. The current archive of Funspectives is a work in progress and the learning curve. The goal is that over the years the collection will not only grow but also fill its own gaps and create a more thorough archive of the organisation and its activities for the future. With Filmspectives, we aim to avoid the lack of documentation that has posed such a challenge in my research of the women's film event in Edinburgh and other pioneering women's film festivals. I hope that future researchers will be able to turn to richer and more complete archives of the past. Thank you.